Today I want to talk to you guys about the pile method. This is the one and only best way to get good results on cleanup at tree job sites. Uh, there are several things that you can do that would be an absolute waste of time on a job site. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of those things for you right now. The first thing that you should never do on a job site that wastes company time worse than anything that I can think of is you take a couple of branches and you carry them to the chipper. Watch me carry this to the chipper. This is a worker wasting time. This worker is carrying two little branches. This worker wants to waste my money. The second worst thing you can do on a job site wasting time is raking material across the lawn. Notice how long this takes. You're gonna do this with a whole pile, right? You're gonna make a whole pile, and then you're gonna rake it across the yard. Oh, it looks efficient. Look, I'm leaving clean, clean grass right there. Not efficient, wasting time, okay? A rake is not a transportation device. A rake is for gathering materials together into one place into a pile so that they can be transported by a more efficient means. Do not rake material across the yard. Rake in a circle. This is integral to the pile method. You see an area that looks like a cluster. Pull it together. There's a pile. There's a pile. There's a pile. As you can see, this area pretty much looks clean. All we have to do is pick up these piles and put them together. This is a more efficient method of transportation for branches. Oh, what are we going to do about this? Well, this is small. We can push this with the blower. The point is we're not raking material all the way across the yard. We're not raking everything here into one place. The blower is much better for that purpose. The third and final thing that wastes time is running the blower on materials that are too bulky or too excessive for the blower. I'll show you some areas that we should not be running the blower on right now. This area right here has some branches in it. Anything branchy is going to become a problem for the blower. Lots of new workers are, are very excited about running a big backpack blower. They've never run it before. Don't waste company time running a backpack blower on sticks that you can pull together into a pile. This is the pile method. You create piles that are suitable for the tool that you're using at the time. This machine is what we use for moving our piles. We can use it to move a pile that's little, or we can use it to move big branches and sticks. I want you guys to see what these men are doing right here. These branches right here are ready to be carried by the bobcat. The bobcat can come and grab a big old group of these and carry them out. It maximizes usage of the bobcat. It, it gives us more time doing things that are efficient, less time fooling around. Sometimes you can build a pile of logs by hand. This is a very helpful task that you can do on a job site that optimizes the use of the bobcat. If you're not using the bobcat, you simply figure out the largest size pieces that you can move without killing yourself and move those instead, okay? So now we have these piles. This pile right here is the, the, the ideal. This is the thing that I like to see. I like to see a pile of branches that looks like about the right size for the bobcat. Watch me grab this pile. As you can see, the mini is able to carry all these branches with no problem. Whereas that pile would probably require 
maybe two or three men, one trip each, unless it's a really strong guy that can grab a huge bundle, but he's exhausting his strength doing that. We're not wasting our strength here, and we're not wasting our energy. We're just making the bobcat do the work for us in the most optimum way possible. Look at these piles over here. That's one grab for the bobcat right there. Why would you drag these branches when you could carry them in the, with the bobcat? You'd have one guy at the front running the chipper. You take these, you feed them, or you drop them off to the guy, and then you come back for more. This is a very efficient method. This area right here is a total disaster. Look at how all these branches are piled. This is because when I was in the tree on Saturday, I was in a hurry to get the tree on the ground. So we knew it was okay to make a little bit of a mess here because we know how to clean it up, okay? The first stage of cleanup in this area right here is to extract out the stuff that's too large. You can either extract it out by cutting it into sections and throwing it into piles, or you can do it with the bobcat. Now I can see that this is easily a manual area right here. I can cut these into six foot segments and make a pile of wood pieces, okay? You build the, the wood pieces first because the wood is stopping you from getting all the branches. Once you get the wood pieces into a pile like we were just looking at, then you can start working on the branches. But the pile method is roughly the same. Look at this. This pile right here, it's about 12 feet wide. That 12 foot wide pile is able to go through between these houses when we grab it with the grapple. You have to know what your machine is able to process and carry. But the machine is not able to come in here and grab a, a bunch of material here. What it's going to do is probably grab these one at a time. It's going to pull them out one at a time and build a pile for itself. It's going to get the wood out of the way and then we're going to go in there by hand and we're going to adjust these. We're going to do some of this. We're going to do some of this. We're going to do some of this. And we're going to build piles that make sense for the bobcat to carry. Usually we're sorting wood from branches. If you can follow this method, the job site will clean up so fast and so efficiently, you'll cut your labor time in half. Now, I'll show you more about the pile method when we get to the part where there's no branches here, but in the meantime, I'm just going to put you guys on a tripod and let you watch us work. The bobcat is doing pretty much all the dragging and moving of brush and materials here, as you can see. It does work on building piles for itself, but building piles is often mainly a manual job. The best use of time is normally you want to have people process this stuff as it's coming down, but we just didn't have guys on site that were good enough at this method when we took it down on Saturday. So that's why we had a little bit of a mess here. It's not customary and it's not necessary. Right here you can see Luke is building a pile here by hand. He's using a chainsaw if needed and he's making something that's easy for me to grab. If you don't have a bobcat, you can still use this method. But instead of grabbing bundles with the bobcat, you're getting the biggest bundles you can by hand. So this is a pretty good sized bundle, but I can get a lot of this, look. You drag this, bro. Or you take, you take the heavy stuff off, like the logs and stuff, and then you just drag the branch parts, carry the logs. But a big bundle like this is what you should be dragging. You should not be pulling two, three branches. You build a pile as big as you can. Even if it takes two guys to do it, then you pull the pile. This is how you properly utilize the pile method. It's more work for you to walk there and back twice than it is to pull something heavy. This is called being a man, okay? I'm going to use this plywood to scrape material into a pile. This is one of the best ways of getting jobs done faster if you have a mini skid steer.
This is the type of raking that I like to see on the job site. Anytime I see an excessive amount of walking, I know that I'm wasting a lot of company time or paying workers to waste a lot of company time if they're walking too much. You see Luke building a pile. You see Michael building a pile. That's at the heart of all this is that you're not using a rake as a transportation device. See how the bobcat is able to pick up a chunk of this pile and carry it even though it's not the whole pile? This is how we save time. At this point on the job site, because it's a silver maple, a lot of the material that's going to be free out here is going to be very lightweight. This area is ready for blowing right here. Everything here is small. These sticks might resolve into a pile, at which point Michael is going to move past it. So as he's blowing, he's going to be like, wow, look, there's a bunch of sticks in one place. Let me just blow here. I'll blow here, I'll blow here, I'll blow here. And what you'll have is a pile that resolves in the middle of a clean lawn. Uh, we've got piles here. Michael can start running the backpack blower now and clean blowing all this area, all these little twigs in between the piles. And then we know when we pick up these piles, we're doing a perfect, perfect job carrying these piles with no spills, no drops. Because once we have that area clean, if we're carrying a pile and we're dropping material, then we're re-raking where we already clean raked once, or in this case, we where we blew. So this area over here, Michael might resolve this into kind of a large raking area, but you see Luke is already doing it. So Luke is gonna resolve this for Mike into a smaller pocket and Mike is gonna be able to blow. You'll see these branches won't be here. These are all gonna resolve. You're gonna have pile, 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 pile. You can pick up six, 10 piles, 15 piles. It's not hurting your efficiency. What hurts your efficiency is the three things I talked about at the beginning of this video. It's time for this wood to start getting picked up. I'm gonna get wood after this. I'm gonna get all the wood out of here and then I'm gonna bring the plywood over and you guys can use a tarp, you can use a bucket to get your piles, but you pick up your piles in a way that doesn't make a mess on this exit area right here. You do not wanna blow it and then blow it again. It's a waste of your time. This little segment of video, 40 seconds long, it's actually an hour and 10 minutes of work, but this is a pretty good sized area and there was a, a lot of material there and we're getting this area done a lot faster than some crews would get it done. So you just have to keep going and don't stop and try to form those piles and you'll see that quickly those piles will disappear. Um, it's not really rocket science. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. It's just implementing what you know works the best. And I promise you guys, if you do this, you're going to find out it works the best.